agentic process automation. So it's all based on this paper, um, uh, agentic process automation, pro agent from RPA to agentic process automation. Um, it, it seems to be a good term, it's resonating. Uh, so we will uh, have to see how this evolves. So just a caveat, uh, this is very, very new. <clears throat> they have just have a paper, so it's just a concept. And they have shown some implementation with N8N, which is a, another automation workflow generation low code software. Um, so the thing with agentic process automation uh, is that it uses LLMs uh, or, or agents. So as I said, agents is nothing but uh, LLMs. Uh, to automate these workflows. So uh, the great thing is that, uh, like I mentioned before, you know, what are we doing for RPA? So all we do is give it a prompt, you know, like, so if you look at it here, so let's say, you know, download all papers from XRIV every day and send me the most important one. So a good way to understand this is contrasting with RPA, right? Uh, again, since most of our background is RPA. So with RPA, what we are doing is manually constructing that workflow. So whether it's UiPath or Automation Anywhere or Blue Prism, we are, uh, we are manually constructing that workflow. So we are understanding what task needs to be done. We are breaking down like what we, sh I sh we discussed earlier, and then we are constructing that workflow, right? Whereas uh, with uh, APA, what they're suggesting is that this workflow will be automatically generated uh, with the agent. So we are just giving it the prompt or the intent, and then it says, okay, this is what I want to do. So let me you know, construct the uh, uh, flow out of it, right? So they have an example here, and in terms of, you know, so let's say when I send a worksheet or a business line through a uh, thing, send me send some send send x to business uh, send x to slack and send something to gmail right so now it's basically it's just creating an intent now the llm is figuring out what it needs it says okay because it's mentioned web i need a web hook right and then he says since i need to uh, uh, have two different uh, places to go if, if it is slack or to gmail so based on that, it says, okay, I need a control agent. A control agent is nothing but an if else, but very dynamic, right? So it based on uh, whatever instructions are uh, based on whatever that data is, it basically uh, gets into uh, different flows. So if it is two customer or two business, so it says decide which business line. And this is again, I remember a complex thing, okay? So the, it's not like, uh, you know, an if else which can be decoded. It is actually, let's say, a line in Excel. It has to read that line in Excel and decide whether it is a, a two business or a two uh, uh, customer. So that's why that's a control agent. And the control agent <clears throat> then uh, sends the thing, you know, send, it's, it's, it's basically if then, if then, right? So it sends to a data agent or a Slack. And if it's a, and, and there's a data agent too. And a data agent, what it does is it can carry out a more uh, complex data things. And what they mean by that is, for example, here is to write an email, right? And so they are giving an example here of that one. Uh, so it's they say that, uh, you know, so, so whatever data has come, uh, it, it captures by a web hook, puts it in a Google sheet, and then there are uh, rows. Now in each row, if it's a business line, so it has to decode that. It has to understand whether it's a business line or a um, you know customer line. If it's a business line, it sends it sends the flow this way, and where it's a loop to look at you know what is in there. It says okay, this business line says the profit is fifty thousand, so I will write this email. So and then it writes an email. So basically, it's making decisions and complex decisions and carrying out actions. And then if it is a uh, you know, this is a two customer. So it says, okay, it's, this one needs to go to a Slack and then it sets the uh, output to a Slack. So uh, at the end of the day, what API is doing is this complex decisioning and, and, you know, and routing of workflows. So uh, it, it, it does the task interpretation. So you're just telling it the task, it interprets it, plans it out, constructs the workflows. Uh, and it can integrate with, uh, you know, Google Sheets and Slack. We saw tool usage, right? So this is basically, it can use the uh, APIs to integrate with Slack, for example. Uh, and then there is a control logic. We looked at that control logic, which is, you know, if then, so it is not about coding if then else, like in UiPath we were doing, I'm sorry, I should not say UiPath, <laughs> not calling out anyone, but, you know, any of this RPA things, which is all rule-based thing. Um, and then data processing, we saw how a data agent can, you know, do complex tasks like to, uh, like writing emails, 
Uh, it also they also take a interesting way, which is basically they are um, using all these things. Uh, where is it there? Okay, here if they actually uh, taking all these um, uh, steps and then they are coding it in JSON, and then they are using Python, and then they are using Python plus JSON to construct this workflow in what they are calling as an agentic workflow description language. Uh, and that agentic workflow description language is then converted into these blocks within N810. And uh, now, again, those are all very uh, you know nitty gritty. You don't need to know all that. But I'm just saying, you know, it's a very in, in, uh, interesting approach. I'm just wondering if they can write Python code, why not just execute Python code? And that's something I've been thinking about because LLMs can now generate Python code. So you know these actions which you are using in UiPath. All those things can, you know, be generated by Python code and in runtime, and then tested, and and then it can be, you know, executed. Uh, so I, these guys are taking that approach. I think that's in a short term. I just think in longer term, it will just construct the code and then, you know, go test it, uh, resolve it, and then the, there you have your workflow. Uh, and then it will keep on learning, right? Real-time adaptation learning. So all these things are possible with API. So the possibilities are huge. <laughs> uh, and the re reason uh, I'm saying it's a 10 trillion uh, opportunity. And so uh, uh, just a comparison between RPA and uh, API, uh, just for a quick thing. You know, we, we, we've seen this all this right now so, so far, but yeah, quickly, it's rule-based. RPA was rule-based, this is LLM-based. Manual versus automated construction of workflows, right? You're not making the workflows. Um, Predefined rules, we just saw it, the dynamic uh, rules. Uh, we had scripts, macros, various things, low code programming, everything. Here it's advanced technologies, uh, you know, data agent, control agent, Python, uh, <laughs> integration, um, you know, pre-built integrations. We had actions. And that's something, again, I don't know, with the, the whole UiPath actions, how long it will survive? <laughs> because that is one of the... Uh, Key things of RPA it has all these libraries that we have built. They are all been library providers, um, and then uh, complexity. This I think can handle more complexity. Uh, this is highly flexible, minimal human intervention. But then, like uh, I think uh, AJ mentioned or Shravan mentioned, uh, we need uh, we need uh, humans, and we'll talk about it. Um, implementation time is much faster, you know, because you are not building the workflows. Agents will build it, and agents will build it in no time. So. Uh, so people are asking, Shravan, what do you think about reliability? So we'll talk about it. Every simple prompt response is not very reliable hallucination. So what do you think about it? Okay, yeah, so that's the challenges. <laughs> and I think everyone has been talking about the challenges. So let's talk about the challenges. Uh, and we'll pause after this, and then we'll start some discussions of this. Uh, exactly, <laughs> reliable and safe decision-making. Hallucination is a problem. And that's where uh, I think we need humans first. Uh, and, and you know, I, I was participating in a discussion yesterday moderated by Doug and I was saying, you know, people, we keep on saying humans in the loop, humans in the loop. Uh, I somehow think we should be humans first. Though humans may be doing very less, but we are doing the control of this whole thing. It should not, agents should not go berserk and do whatever it wants. That's going to be really bad. Uh, and, you know, uh, that's where I think something like an, uh, earlier RPA work or a BPM workflow definition uh, may be needed. So there is one of the study that came from uh, Google. It's called Alpha Codium. Uh, again, look it up. Uh, so they are mentioning a place where humans can first design the workflows, just like what we were doing, and then let the agents do the thing so that we know we are telling the agents exactly what we want to do and we have some ways to correct it. Uh, another thing I've noticed is Devin's, uh, uh, Devin's uh, UI, which is really great. Uh, so Devin, when you give a prompt, it goes and does all this uh, code and gets you this Python code and stuff like that. But you can actually go back and see, uh, you know, uh, okay, you know, at this part of this agent interaction, this is where this code went wrong. So then we can correct it and say, okay, now from here proceed it, right? So basically a way of uh, re rewinding and going back to what the agent did and proceeding from there. So I think those are like challenges, absolutely, in terms of decision making and you know ensuring that humans are first. Uh, and again, I was mentioning yesterday, there will be good people with AI and as well as bad people with AI. <laughs> so uh, we'll have to see how the bad people do do with it, and so we'll have to take measures so that the bad uh, outcomes are limited. Um, and then integration with existing systems like legacy system, I think, is still a challenge. Uh, so that. So again, we're probably 
RPA can play a role in terms of legacy uh, you know, UI integration where you know where there are no APIs available. Uh, finally, the automation bias is a big problem, uh, which I was not thinking, but it is because uh, people become dumb. <laughs> we all become that much dumber with Google search. Uh, so think of this one when uh, agents are carrying out the tasks, you know, and so let's say you know, a very simple example of, uh, let's say, ordering something. We now told the AI agents to do it. Then we'll we'll think that whatever it is telling you is right, but probably not. You know, so you just need to be conscious and uh, you know don't be over reliant on all these automated systems. Okay, so so many questions coming in. So let's take all those things. Uh, what did I have after this? Yeah, why bother about these things? So um, let's take. Uh, <laughs> let's take uh, this question. Do you think API can have a capability to perform UI automation similar to RPA? And that's what I was thinking, you know, like talking about the tools, right? Like we were talking about the agent capabilities. One of the capabilities tool. I'm thinking RPA, RPA would be a tool in, as part of that one. Again, that's just my thoughts at this point of time. Um, I'm, I'm, you know, guys, thoughts? Anyone want to share here? Well, I, I agree with that. Okay. Yeah, R, RPA in general, like the UI pass, everything, those aren't going away. Um, yes. they're going to evolve and do things that are on their own side, but even if they don't, they become part of the toolbox of every enterprise and system in case they need to utilize that tool set. Yeah, yeah. Uh, by the way, it the, the remind, uh, reminds me of what Sriram shared today with me, where Sriram Rangu is on the call. Uh, and Sriram, if you want to jump in, but Power Automate has just come out with uh, your agents. Uh, <laughs> and uh, are there yeah, yeah. details available? Yeah, Sriram, go ahead. I haven't much, read, you know, went into the detail, but as soon as I saw that, yes, as we talk, the things are happening in the background very fast. And then, you know, as Doug said, these tools aren't, aren't going to go anywhere. However, the capability goes increased, you know, while uh, while being respectful and responsible towards what we are doing. Hmm. And we are, you know, here to test and then uh, provide yeah. our feedback. Yeah. Yeah, so AI recordings is very interesting. Go look at it, Power Automate AI recordings, uh, which is basically you can, you know, with your voice, with your text, you can tell what you're looking for and the, the, it's constructing the workflow, just like what we discussed just now. This was what we, here we were just giving one prompt. And I don't think that's so feasible one prompt to so many with complex things. I think I like the AI recordings concept of Power Automate. Um, but let's go to the next question. I'm thinking how AI agents would identify UI elements automatically on screen and i don't think it cannot be it cannot be achieved without human intervention thoughts anirudh sethi okay thank you anirudh so uh, my thoughts and i'll open it up I, so uh, the thing is this is not a done deal uh, but people are working on it this why uh, yesterday i think uh, sunny shared uh, in a startup uh, who is working on it massive uh, action, well, large action models. <laughs> but this whole large action models has been uh, deflated a bit because uh, Rabbit R1 said they'll do this large action models. Uh, they're the one they brought the term actually. And then one, once they started digging deep what they're doing, uh, one, it was uh, this Rabbit R1 had an Android app. <laughs> it could be run from an Android phone. And two, this was just a playwright script. Uh, so, <laughs> so, you know, RPA still, I think, uh, the way to go for UI elements and things like that, uh, but people are working on it. Uh, like Adept has been trying to work on it. I think some success I've seen there, uh, you know, they're like 30, 40% there. Um, yeah, it is not there. Yeah, but any thoughts on that one? AI, AI learning by looking at the UI elements. Any thoughts? Okay. Uh, um, legacy is being taken on by experts. Oh, so if you can uh, call an API using a natural language, if your LLM can generate a uh, text which will say what you want to do on the UI, it can probably build that code and then that will execute on the website, right? Yes, it is. It's absolutely, Shavan. And uh, the, there are startups building on it. I forgot the other names of the startups, uh, but Adept comes to mind because they had like 300 million, but they have still not solved this. So mm -hmm. I'm still not, you know, it's, 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 uh, we'll have to see how it comes. Yeah. Even uh, as, uh, our, uh, I think Ali, Microsoft are getting into the space now. Have you seen that new um, capture thing they're trying to add on to Windows desktops where it just one, captures the screenshots and then learns on them? Uh -huh. yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Memory, right? Memory. 
Something like that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I mean, it's scary because there's no way I'm allowing that on my personal laptop, but uh, on my work laptop either. But it's basically them trying to do process mining or task mining hmm. using LLMs and getting around it, the, the complexities of it, right? Yeah, it's a Microsoft thing. So. I don't know if you've used the Microsoft uh, process mining tool. It's terrible. I think I, I sat down once with an SME trying to go through it. And I think after about half an hour's worth of recordings, it just crashed. Every yeah, and that, time. that's an acquisition, actually, to be fair. Uh, min minute. Yeah, yeah, I know. I know. I, I expected it to be better than that, you know? Like, <laughs> what the hell? It, is, it is just like soft emotive minute. They, they somehow acquire all the smaller companies, which is cheaper. Anyway, uh, <laughs> someone else say, Shravan, you're saying something? No, no, I'm good. I was uh, asking what Alex, which one is he's mentioning a uh, Microsoft recall or something else? Yeah, Microsoft recall memory. Okay. Yeah, that's the one. That's, that's exactly yeah, right. recall. Yeah. So I assume they're going to be doing something in the space. Mm -hmm. but, uh, yeah, that, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, they say that it's going to be stored locally. You don't need to care about privacy, but I think people will, <laughs> will be <laughs> freaking out about that. All right. Uh, one last thing, and then we'll completely open up for questions. So this is my thought process. This is, came from this Acquire presentation. It's a good uh, thought process that they had. So I thought I'll share with you guys. So AI can create, right? And it's not that software earlier also could not create, but AI, generative AI models is very good at creations, whether it is uh, text-based, uh, you know, articles, uh, audio, video, uh, and various things, even DNA sequencing, it can generate. Again, as I said, it's a prediction engine. So you give it anything, it will generate. So you give it test cases, it will generate test cases for you, right? So we can, it can create. Now, over a period of time, the foundation models, not the LLMs, the foundation models have good, become good at reasoning, and we have seen that, right? Um, so the creation is the right uh, right side of it. Reasoning is the left side of our part. So right, right, side, right brain, left brain. Uh, so the left brain reasoning is getting really good, and as we saw, that whole control agent means it's basically reasoning, right? Uh, so now, if it can do both of these things together, so what it means is that the LLMs can now interact with the world, uh, especially the digital world, uh, just like humans would, right? And so RP was a harbinger to that. I mean, we were interacting with, but that was through UI elements, through screens. But now this is becoming very intelligent. You can create as well as uh, you can reason and you can interact with the world. So what does that mean? What does that, that means is that AIs can now interact like humans and carry out transactions. So a lot of the world, what we're doing is this transaction, it is services, right? So it's a big opportunity to replace services, and including software services, but every service and a and lot of these white collar jobs basically, right? I mean, so at the end of the day, it can automate all this uh, or, you know, at least augment a lot of these uh, white collar services. Uh, and so uh, as per Sequoia, it's the biggest value creation. We are in the precipice of the biggest value creation mankind has ever known, right? <laughs> so, uh, and that they assume they, they are estimating as tens of trillions of dollars. 